Hi, welcome back. Today we are going to look at arrays uh, again, but this time we're going to look at it as arrays of objects. So Java arrays can hold either primitive data or object data. Remember that when you're designing an array, you have to make sure that it holds all of the same data type. So you can see when we do our declaration here, we say we're going to look at a string movies bracket bracket that tells Java that we're going to do an array called movies and it's going to be containing a bunch of strings. On the other side of the equal sign we have to call the new command then we put the type strings and then we inside the brackets we have to put how big the array is going to be. Now we've done this before where you've also used the curly brackets and you have declared not only the length but all of the items in it when you first start. This time we're just setting it up as null so all of those five entries will be null inside the array. In the next line of code we are assigning the index 0, the string literal, creature from the black lagoon. The one thing we have to be very careful of when we're using strings in arrays is length. If we do movies.length, that is the length of the array movies. If we do movies bracket zero bracket dot length parenthesis parenthesis, that's the length of the string that's stored at index zero. Remember, strings need to do some action to figure out how long they are. We have to actually go through and count the number of characters. At least Java has to count the number of characters. So that's a method. It's doing something. Whereas the length of the array itself, movies.length, is just a part of what it is. It's a property and there's required length in order to set it up. So you can't create an array of objects or an array of primitives in Java without determining its length first. And that's either done by using the curly brackets and initializing all the values first, and then Java just knows, it counts how many there are. Or in this case where we explicitly state in the brackets the number five, letting Java know how many string objects we're going to have in this array. So let's take a look at this code here. This is what it looks like inside of Java. And what we're actually doing here is, again, we are setting up a data type string, which is an object, and we are naming it calling it movies, using the bracket bracket to tell Java this is going to be not just a string called movies, it's going to be an array that contains strings. And then we tell Java that we want five of them, indexed 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, that's really important how we index them. We can also call this an array of objects um, for our purposes. Knowing that strings are objects will help us identify how all other objects would behave in this situation. Java doesn't really do much different in terms of arrays when it's a list of objects. It doesn't care what kind of object it is as long as it is some kind of object and it's all the same thing inside the array. So let's take a look at this code. Again, we're setting up movies as an array. Has a length of five, index zero, one, two, three, four. We're gonna set the first index to the string literal, the interview. So we've assigned the string literal to index zero. And then we have this for loop, which is gonna go through, and note, dot length here, it's gonna go through the full length so i is less than that length means it's going to get indexed 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It doesn't actually get to 5 because its i is less than the length. 
So there's our for loop. Inside of a for loop, what we're doing is we're printing out each index of the movie's array. So the question is, what's actually going to happen here? Is it going to run fine? Is it going to cause any issues? We don't have anything else stored at index 1, 2, 3, or 4. What is Java actually going to do? And if you think about it, I've actually already said it. Java stores null in that first line in every single index, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, when the array is first created. So it's really an array of strings, but inside of each of those boxes is the word null, not a string, literal null, just a thing called null. We assigned the interview to movie zero, but Java had assigned null to index one, two, three, four. So when we print this out, what we're going to get on the screen is the interview and then null, 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 null for all the other spots. So you give it a try. Add the movie, don't eat the daisies to index number two. Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens when we add don't eat the daisies to index two. We're assigning movies to in that third line of code to the string literal don't eat the daisies. And now when we print it out, we get the interview at index zero, null at index one, don't eat the daisies at index two, and then null, null for the other two indexes. So we got zero, one, two, three, four. We could use a loop in order to get all of the values from the user. So in this case, we're using scan.nextLine. So if you look at the top, I created a new scanner called scan, and I created my array just like it did before. We still assigned index zero and index two, but now we're gonna go through and ask the user to enter in values for all of the index, zero, one, two, three, and four. If the user enters in a value at index zero, it's going to overwrite the string literal that is already there. So it won't say the interview anymore, it'll say whatever the user entered. Same thing for index two. When we run the for loop, it's gonna go ahead and print out all of the values that we had entered. This is a really important structure to see how to enter in things into an array using a for loop and then how to print them out. Those are two very important for loops that you should be paying attention to. So if we were to run this in memory, what happens is an object is created for each one of these indexes, movies 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we're going to store in them those um, five different movies. And then when we run it, it's going to print out all five different movies. So there's a memory reference that happens here where movies indexed zero was pointing to the string literal, the interview. Now movies index zero is pointing to a string object that the user has typed in. And it's not the same as a string literal because the user isn't putting it in code. They're actually entering it in through the scanner. So Java treats it a little bit differently, but for our purposes, we're going to equate how they're all treated and the interview kind of loses its tag. We talked about this before and would theoretically, like any object, get garbage collected uh, at some point in the Java program execution. So how do we get the length of a string in an array? Well, you have to remember that when we're indexing an individual object in the array, we use the name of the array, which in this case would be movies. 
Then we put the bracket and then the index that we're interested in. So now we're pointing to the string object. In order to get the length of a string, we have to use the dot length method. And Java will go through and essentially count the characters that are in that string and return that value for you. So that's all for today. Uh, I hope you enjoy the practice and I will talk to you next time.